this, I'm, for those of you who don't know, I think most, of, I know most of you, but uh, there are a few here who, uh, who aren't all that familiar to me. Uh, I'm Eric Bortridge, I'm Charles' middle son. And uh, <clears throat> August and I, and uh, with the uh, help from many editors, uh, put together uh, a eulogy for my dad. And I'm going to deliver that right now. It won't be. It's not that long, so don't. Sit <laughs> down. Gentle be and calm of mind. Truthful, honest, ever kind. Liberal in thought and action. In doing good, find satisfaction. Consideration show to others. Treating all good men as brothers. Have better aims than grasping health. Be always true to thine own self. If I succeed in keeping these few simple rules, it ought to please the ruler of the universe. And as all doubt will not disperse, so I with reason can embrace religion at the throne of grace. I'll pin my faith on this my creed and take whate'er will be its meed. Charles Henry Bortreed was born August 3rd, 1916, and he passed away January 25th, 2012. The words I just read were penned by his grandfather, Charles Augustus Bortreed, who died in 1909, before my dad was born. Even so, dad was the embodiment of these guiding principles in his grandfather's creed. He was a man of integrity who walked the walk. Dad was born in Toledo, Ohio. His fondest childhood memories were of times spent with friends and loved ones on the Maumee River. He graduated from Maumee High School and attended Dick Kenyon College and Ohio State University before going to Kirksville College of Osteopathic Medicine, where he received his medical degree. He interned at Detroit Osteopathic Hospital for three years and then practiced surgery in Portland, Maine. <clears throat> when he moved back to Detroit, he practiced at Ridgewood Osteopathic Hospital until 1959. And then Dad was among the original founders of Garden City Hospital, where he practiced surgery until his retirement as senior surgeon in 1980. In 1956, he married Rosalie, the love of his life. And even after 55 years of marriage, his devotion and love for her was an inspiration to me. Dad had a deep love for family. As most of you know, if you were friends of his, he made you feel like part of his family. I like to think that he passed that on to us. He raised six kids. Mitzi and Duane came with mom, and then there were Henry, me, August, and Raleigh. He was the patriarch of the family and a guiding light for all of us. Dad had a deep love for personal freedom, and he was a perfect mentor who led by example. He gave his children a great deal of latitude to grow and develop individually and taught the value of personal discipline through his own actions. He was a gentle man and a kind man. A kinder soul never existed. Dad taught us to pray, and he prayed ceaselessly. He taught us to thank God for all our blessings and good fortune, and to pray for those less fortunate than we, and to pray for curiosity, among other things. I'm certain that he prayed for curiosity for himself because he was abundantly blessed with it. Dad had many, many interests and passions, among them music, especially Hungarian gypsy and classical music, any and all sciences, reading and collecting books, boats, sailing, maritime history, religion. He was a devout Christian medicine and surgery, mechanical engineering, wood and metalworking, violin making and playing, tool making, model making, working on his home. Man, did he work on his home. 
fine arts, industrial arts, architecture, craftsmanship, dining and especially dining out, winemaking and the consumption thereof, <laughs> entertainment, world history, travel and geography, languages, especially German, personal responsibility, humanitarianism, philanthropy, and worrying about everyone he loved. It seemed like there was nothing that he was not interested in. And when he was interested in something, he wouldn't just read about it. He would get his hands dirty. Dad wasn't just interested in violins. He played them and built them. He started two companies around manufacturing stringed instruments and the tools that are used to build them. He wasn't just interested in boats. He built boats. He bought Hacker Marine, and he started Hard Chine Boat and Model Company. <clears throat> Sadly, he was no businessman. He would be the first to admit it. None of these businesses ever made any money, but that was never the main reason he did these things. And Dad was a, a true philanthropist. Even though he was always worried about his own financial situation, he gave to any cause that he thought would help. Some of his mo most recent donations went to the Salvation Army, Southern Poverty Law Center, the Heat and Warmth Fund, Disabled American Veterans, Veterans of Foreign Wars, Paralyzed American Veterans, American Cancer Society, Gleaners Food Bank, Michigan Osteopathic Association, the Detroit Rescue Mission, the Ch Detroit Symphony Orchestra, Covenant House, March of Dimes, Volunteers of America, Garden City Osteopathic Hospital Association, Feed the Children, Amnesty International, and anyone who came to the door in need. And uh, another one that, uh, that I hadn't put down here, uh, but was reminded of most recently was that uh, he also donated his body to the advancement of science. Dad was generous to a fault. He gave it till it hurt, though he would never let you know it. <clears throat> he had a great big smile and a sense of humor, a great big smile that could light up any room. Dad was 95 years old. He had a long, wonderful life filled with purpose and love. Dad ran deep. He was my father, and he was the greatest man I have ever known. I don't want to belabor anything too much. I know everybody's hungry. But I just want to say a few words. Uh, just just thinking about that the last few days, you know, Dad had a mannerism, a lot of you who know him would remember this. When he was around family or friends, he would smile, he'd inhale slowly, and he'd close his eyes. Those moments, his cup was full. He was at peace with the universe. I feel Dad's presence here and now, and I see him in that state of peace. Dad was a proponent of freedom and opportunity. He felt that if a person had the opportunity and the freedom, he could accomplish great things. Now freedom could mean autonomy, the freedom to act unimpeded or without concrete direction. It could also mean freedom from ridicule for mistakes made along the way. Opportunity, on the other hand, is, a com is complex because it deals with any and all resources that might be required money, training, an example, tools, relationships, you know, resources. Growing up, Dad made sure all possible resources were in place. For me, the main resources were Dad's workshops. When I was very young, I just loved to watch Dad tinkered with a model, worked on a violin or something mechanical. He was a very mechanical person. Later, I spent a lot of workshop time on my own, on whatever interested me, interested me at the time. 
Those experiences and examples lit the fuse on who I eventually became. As far as freedom is concerned, Dad kept us on a pretty long leash. And although he consistently set the very best example for us to follow, we didn't always exactly <laughs> follow the letter of his plan. <laughs> but he genuinely felt that we needed freedom to make mistakes and grow into whomever we would without inhibition. Now our actions weren't always exactly in line with what Dad would have wanted. He always gave us the benefit of the doubt. He would look upon our indiscretions in the very best light. He knew that we weren't that we were having parties and that the garbage cans full of beer cans didn't exactly come from can drives. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day though, Dad's good example, the opportunity he provided and the freedom he afforded us made us all the adults we are today. He could have done worse. We'll miss Dad, but luckily we still have a big piece of him here. Not only in my brothers and sister, but in Dad's sister, Tinka, who is as close in soul as anyone could possibly be. She too is a saint. Dad's and Tinka's, our families, are similar because of Dad's and Tinka's similarities. It's so great to have some of them here with us today. We love you guys and you know it. Dad and Tinka's special relationship, Dad and Tinka had a special relationship. They would both light up at the very mention of each other's name. I've seen this so many times. And for good reason. They were not only, nat only natural kin, they were kindred spirits. Dad is at peace with the, uni with the universe now. I want to thank him for freedom, opportunity, and love. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I believe we have some great music coming our way, and we have uh, this microphone so people can say stuff. Maybe we should uh, uh, get started eating and uh, partying, and later on, why, anybody who wants to use this mic is welcome to it. I have something to say, but I'm not going to keep you away from uh, a lot of people here uh, chipped in cooking, and so let's party. All right.